Hey everybody, and welcome to this, my first attempt to make it to the Hancock Lakes out by St. Elmo, Colorado. That should be all the clue you need to know that I'm not gonna make it. This is what's left of the town of Hancock. That's a still image there on the Ghibellini with Harmon direct positive paper. That's that photo being taken. And this is what it looks like if with just a digital camera. That's the remains of the saloon there, right there by the trailhead. This is Chalk Creek, also right by the trailhead, flowing under a bridge that the road to the Alpine Tunnel Trailhead goes. Uh, uh, the, the bridge there is part of that road, which is Colorado 295, for anyone really interested in that. This is pretty typical of what trail conditions were like when I got started. Snow was pretty well packed, not that deep, a few inches with some water running underneath it in places, pretty slippery as well but nothing I couldn't handle in my boots and my lined pants. But you can see here that water running underneath that snow. That's really the big risk on this hike throughout because there was no way to really tell where that water was under the snow and falling in meant my feet could get very cold and frostbite was a concern. Here are some stills showing you what the area looked like on the day that I made this attempt, which was late May 2020, uh, very nearly June for those of you who haven't been in Colorado and are amazed that it still snows in June. Those rock formations and those still images in the background, that's called monument rocks. They're pretty dominant in the whole scene uh, throughout this whole hike, so you'll see them a lot. Here are some other ruins which I suspect are part of the town of Hancock, this outhouse right here, as well as this collapsed building and uh, an old either welders or food cart trailer, something like that. I'm not sure what it was used for. Here's a shot on, I think, Atomic X with the Ghibellini 4x5. We'll see more shots of that little truck thing at the end of this video when we look at all the extra stills. Here are some shots of the trailhead, and this is where the going got stupid. And <laughs> you can see I'm just post holing here at this point. As I, as I got across a big open meadow area what happened was the snow just got super super deep and I kept losing the trail and uh, post holing deeper and deeper into the snow this was not the worst post holing but by this point I had given up on trying to take stills because um, I was just having a really hard time here you can see uh, I'm gonna set the camera down in just a second you can see how deep the snow is and it is deeper than my right knee and uh, I don't, so this was not the worst post holing I did. The worst one was a little bit later than this when I actually turned around and had put the camera away because I just couldn't manage it anymore, where I sunk so deeply that I had to lay down on my belly and pull myself out across the snow because it was uh, waist deep and I had just completely sunk. And also the water under the snow in these points was so deep that it was filling my shoes. So already when I was recording this, my shoes were completely full of water. And you can see there my legs, that's how deep the water was under the snow. Uh, one, a couple of the times that I, I fell into or post hold, the water was literally just knee deep or slush. Very, very cold. And if you stick with this for a little bit, I think you'll get to see just um, how dramatic some of the water was as I pour it out of my boots. The good news was my boots were really, really clean after this hike because uh, all the water under the snow had done a very good job of laundering them. And here we go. Let's uh, get those off and yep. <laughs> Both of the boots were like that. Everything, my socks were completely saturated. And uh, this was the hike that taught me a really important lesson that all hikers in Colorado should know. In the winter, when you go out hiking, you bring a pair of socks with you to change into when you get back to the car because of things like this. And uh, yeah, so that was, that was pretty serious. And so here I am, I forgot to turn the audio on on the camera because I, I don't use audio when I'm out recording these to try to save some, some SD card space. But um, I was talking about how deep the water is and how wet my shoes and or my boots rather and everything were. And basically, uh, after I filmed this this footage, which will will end here in about 20 seconds, 
um, I, I just sat on that rock for about 20, 25 minutes to let my feet dry as much as I could before putting my boots back on and continuing on down the trail. This is where I, about where I turned around, a little bit before where I actually turned around on this hike. I just gave up, I could not make it. The snow was getting worse and worse. Uh, I'd run into some people on the trail who said that it would just keep getting deeper after that, and I just decided it wasn't worth it. So the, I'd made it about a mile and a half up the trail, losing it a few times and things like that. And uh, here I am back at the car and had to repost hole through that entire section. So when I got back to the car, I got to blather on without the microphone being on some more and also dump water out of my boots again. Uh, I had to leave them outside once I got home to dry for two days. Um, they, they were so waterlogged. So um, let's go on to some stills now and we'll take a look at what uh, at some images that I that didn't make the cut during the uh, during the video. On the way up to the trailhead, there's an, some old mine ruins, the Mary Mar Mary something mine. Uh, I forget what it's called off the top of my head. There's an old cabin and an old mine building on the road, plus an old railroad trestle. There are other trails around that have different parts of this mine, and actually, as I'm recording this. Um, in a few days, going to go out and try to photograph some more of them. These black and white images, by the way, um, that first one was done on direct positive paper on the Ghibellini, giving it a, that high contrast, ghost towny type look. Here's Monument Rocks. This is on Atomic X, and my batch of Atomic X is having some development consistency issues. Uh, this is the Hancock Saloon on direct positive paper. Forgot to reverse it. Here is uh, some more images. Here are some more images of that old truck, again on direct positive paper. This is with a J Lane plate. You can see the little damage to the emulsion there on the right side. And this is E100. Now, a moment on these two, the J Lane plate is orthochromatic, so it doesn't see yellows, oranges, and reds. The E100 does. So I didn't know that the lens board for one of my lenses had a light leak in it until I got the slides back and uh, a handful of the E100 4x5 slides were ruined by this light leak because the film I'd been using up to that point, which was photo paper and uh, glass plates and some ortho film as well, was not recording the light leak, which had been tinged this orangey color by the color of the lens board. So uh, that to say the least, was a heartbreaking thing when I got those images back. Continuing on, this is the town of St. Elmo, which I visited after my hike because I had tons of extra time not having made it to the lakes. It's a very nice little ghost town. There are still residents there, so there are no ghosts. And um, in fact, the second time I went back here, I did specifically try to find ghosts, and we'll see that in the, my next video. There's no ghosts. Some of these houses still have residents in them, and uh, there is a little shop in town that's very nice to visit. You can feed the chipmunks, there's hummingbirds, things like that. The town is very lovely, very quiet, very nice place to visit. After that, I stopped by Cascade Falls, which is right there on the roadside on the way into St. Elmo, and then took one last stop east of Jefferson on the way back home to photograph what was a very, very nice looking little valley area. So this was my first attempt on Hancock Lakes, and in my next video, we'll try it again and see if we make it. See you then.